All right, I'd like to call the April 26th, 2022 school, regular school board meeting of Independence School District 622 to order. The first item on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. Yeah, we'll all go. All right, so the next item on the agenda is the approval of the agenda. Can I get a motion a second to approve? So moved. Okay, moved by Livingston. Second. Second by Jarman. All in favor say aye. 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 And all opposed say nay. Okay, we have an approved agenda, and then we're going to do the Achievement Excel Awards. And we're going to all stand down here. Um, Charlotte is going to read the awards, and then we're just going to ask the recipients to come up, um, shake hands, and then Marnie is going to do a picture with each re recipient. And if you prefer not to shake hands, that's perfectly acceptable. If you prefer not to shake hands, that's perfectly acceptable. Maybe we'll just do a COVID wave a little bit. <laughs> okay. However we want to do it. I want to make sure people are comfortable. But we'll, we'll spread out a little bit for our photos. Sound good? All right, shall we go down? Okay, so uh, Excellence in Community Education Leadership, Excel, in parentheses awards, are presented annually to individual and groups for their outstanding contribution to the uh, continuum of lifelong learning in District 622. Our first recipient is Brooke Thrall is receiving the Community Educator Award. She's a top-notch educator who is passionate about our youngest learners. In her four years with the District 622, Brooke has uh, coordinated the Early Childhood screening, screening Program and recently expanded her role to include outreach and family engagement and Brooke channels her energy and passion into connecting families with programs and resources, organizing family events, subbing in the preschool classrooms, and assisting whenever there is uh, needed help. Brooke shows leadership, cooperation, and teamwork in everything she does. And District 20, 622 early learning has flourished because of her leadership. All right. <laughs> we'll do a COVID wave. Everyone stand right in the middle, and then we're going to gather around and we'll do a photo. Okay. You're gonna want, we're trying to spread out just a wee bit, but. Um, <laughs> okay. And at the end, there's your right here. Okay. Yeah. Photo, so. <laughs> Thank you so much, 
Thank you. Paula Paula Hartley is receiving the Lifelong Learner Award after becoming a teacher in her home country of Colombia. She came to Minnesota through an APAR program and began studying with Harmony Adult Education in 2019. She has earned her GED and passed the para pro test. She supports her fellow students in class with kindness and enthusiasm. She is currently volunteering at Castle Elementary, taking ESL classes at Harmony, studying for the citizenship test, and plans to start an interpreter training program this summer. All these steps will help her reach her goal of becoming a teacher here in Minnesota. Gispers is receiving the Betty Jane Hawk Community Service Award. She has worked in this 622 community education for over 25 years and coordinates adult enrichment, senior programs, community bridge, and Mills and Wills. What is it that you don't do? <laughs> Uh, Cheryl pushes herself to constantly learn new things in order to bring new opportunities and resources to her community. She forms lasting partnerships with individuals and community organization and shares her leadership and experience with adult program coordinators throughout the state. When she can't find an instructor or volunteer to meet a need, Cheryl does it herself, even if it falls outside the scope of her primary role and workday because she wants people in her community to experience great things. Countless lives have been enriched by Cheryl's tireless efforts. Congratulations. Thank you. Next up, Mark Klingsporn is receiving the Community Partnership Award. Mark is the Tartan High School boys basketball coach and has been a valuable partner to the District 622 Facility Use Office for the past 15 years. He assists with scheduling, equipment, and event setup, and has been a mentor in the community youth, youth coaches, and athletic organization directors. He shared detailed information about how to safely run games, tournaments, and practices during COVID. Mark has run free coach training clinics for community athletic organizations and volunteered his time to offer youth basketball clinics in our district. He has volunteered many weekend hours to supervise the building during youth basketball tournaments. Mark has had a profound impact on our community, both on the basketball court and behind the scenes. Thank you, Mark. Next is Ron Shershak. Ron, there is Ron. Ron is receiving the Betty Jane Hawk Community Service Award. He has volunteered with Community Bridge since 1985 
when the legislature designated funding for school district to facilitate the inclusion of adults with cognitive disabilities and community education opportunities. Over the years, Ron has shared his enjoyment and knowledge of the outdoors through camping, hiking, canoeing, fishing, and outdoor cooking. He assists with many crafts and cooking classes, but perhaps he's, he is best known as Coach Ron, coaching a community bridge softball team and t-ball team since 1986. Community bridge activities fill many of Ron's evenings and weekends, but he also actively volunteers in the community, currently with the Presbyterian Homes in Arden Hills. Ron is more than a volunteer and an educator for ISD 622. For 37 years, he has been a role model and kindness, patience, and friendship to all of us. Thank you for your service. If you want to stand right in front, we'll take your photo. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Local business person Mary Rogers of Specialty Floral in North St. Paul is receiving the Senior Friend Award. She delivers Meals on Wheels every week and has been known to pick up an extra route when needed. Every Thursday, Mary bags and sets up donated baked goods from Panera that are distributed to seniors at Gladstone Senior Center. Through a partnership with Caring for Cats, Mary delivers free cat food and litter to seniors throughout the community. She has provided floral arrangements for Gladstone special events and also regularly donates small flower arrangements to each resident in local senior housing facilities. She has also supported District 622 students by donating materials and teaching students to make corsages for the annual STARS banquet and recently gifted books to each early learning student at Gladstone. Our community is a brighter place because of Mary's generosity with her time, talents, and resources. Thank you, Mary. So we'll have our school board members sit down so we have room for all of our award winners right here. And um, that way you can all get a good photo. We'll sit behind you and, and smile. So uh, come on up if you're our award recipient this evening. You know, something I thought as you are gathering together, um, I just thought it would be really interesting to share and remind everybody that um, our beloved friend of community education, um, BJ Hack and not having her here this year. It's so wonderful uh, it's the, since she passed away. You know, this is I think our first award ceremony since she hasn't been here. Major active member of our community education program, former school board member from many, many years ago. And we lost her this past year. And it's so wonderful to see her memory um, living on in these awards this evening. So I just want to put a thank you out to our community education team for keeping her memory alive too because I know she's been such an important member of our family. So with that, come on up and we'll get your photo taken. Charlotte, 
No, Charlotte, go between Mark and... Yeah. There you go. Well, no, you were right behind Mark, though. All right, now I've got to... We just had a tall person in front of me. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks again, everyone. Thanks for coming out tonight for the awards. Have a good night. All right, next on the agenda is public comment. Um, it's an opportunity for the public to comment on items. Um, speakers, there's no speakers tonight, okay. So there's no public comment tonight. Um, next is consent agenda. All right, the consent agenda consists of routine items that are acted on in a single consolidated motion without board discussion. Board members have the option of pulling items off the consent agenda if they wish to discuss them or consider them individually. So be it resolved by the School Board of Independent District 622 that consent agenda Consent agenda items A through F, and I'm going to read them. A is the minutes of the March 22nd, 2022 business meeting. B is the minutes of the April 5th, 2022 work study session. C is routine personnel. D is bid calendars. E is change order. And F is disbursement. Um, I want to go back to the pictures. Um, so be it approved as written and a copy of the agenda is attached to the minutes. So can I get a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Uh, moved by Livingston. Second. Second by an attorney. Any discussion or any items to pull? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 And all opposed say nay. Okay, the consent agenda is approved. Um, next we have reports, and we're going to start with the student school board reports. Hello, everybody. I don't know if it's just me, but I feel like we haven't had like a meeting in forever. Yeah. It makes me feel like I missed the last one. <laughs> like it made me go back, I'm like, was I there? <laughs> it just feels like forever. But I hope everybody's having a good month and hopefully everybody's not too down and gloomy about this weird weather we're having with all the rain. But I guess if you think of it, April showers bring my flowers. I guess it makes sense. Okay, <laughs> but to get onto my report, um, Personally, for school, we're getting into the mid-try, so it is a little stressful, but we're getting through it. Um, midterms were due t yesterday at 3, so hopefully everybody got their late work in. Um, we just finished the ACTs on the 5th which wasn't too bad. I know I was complaining about it, but it wasn't that, it wasn't that bad. I think it helped that being an avid we already took the practice acts so i already know what i was going like i like i already went in there knowing what i was going to do and how it was going to go so i felt like it wasn't too bad but and we had like a like a 15 minute break and the snacks they had were actually kind of good <laughs> like school lunches they're okay but like the snacks were like different this time they were like like, like cereal bars yeah or like Nutri-Grain bars stuff like that I was like like pretzels I'm like hmm, they're stepping up their game for us but <laughs> um, but I know 
everybody's getting excited for the end of the year, which is, I think we have like six weeks left, almost six weeks, maybe a little less than six or more. Um, but yeah, I know everybody's excited. Uh, so events, there was a Spanish debate tournament, um, which four students from our school placed first, second, fourth, and sixth place in that, which is amazing. Um, they are planning for a senior night at the borough in Woodbury. It used to be like the Big Throw Factory. I have been there. It's really fun. It's really fun, but once you like eat a whole bunch of food, you get super tired. So that's what happened to me. So I wanted to like go home and take a nap. <laughs> um, but they're doing that on June 2nd from 9.30 p.m. till 3.30 a.m. So they'll actually be there all night, which hopefully will be fun for them. Um, the theater club hosted their play, Curious Savage, on the 7th and through the 9th. So hopefully if anybody knew about that, they want to check that out. The jazz and pop group had their concert on the 12th. Um, DECA group has nationals this week. Today was their last day, so I have to text my friend and ask them how it went today. Um, the new NHS members have been inducted, which... I remember mine and it was fun, but they had us like, they like called us name by name. So we had to like walk up there individually. And, and like me, I was like, oh was my so gosh. <laughs> yeah, we had, we, yeah, it was a little ceremony for them, which was so cute. And I know I had fun with that too. And everybody got to take like a big picture. Um, the student, we had student speaker tryouts for graduation, which I didn't even know they had tryouts for that. I thought it was like, they just like pick somebody and like, you talk. But I guess there's trials for that, and the announcements for who's going to be doing that I think is coming out this week or next week, one of the two. The flyers for Link Crew have been posted around the school, and I know some of my friends are in that, and I remember when I was in ninth grade, it like seemed like so much fun at like the, what is it, when the ninth graders have their like, not open house, but you know when they get to go and tour the school which was fun, so I might join that. It seems like really fun and probably good for college <laughs> too. Um, prom nominations have been going out, which I am super excited for. It's gonna be next month on the 21st at the Landmark Center in St. Paul. So, and it, our theme is Enchanted Garden. So hopefully, I'm excited to see everybody's dresses. I'm trying to like hide mine so nobody can see it yet, but I don't, I'm deciding between two dresses. And I'm like, which one should I get? Mm -hmm. So probably a lot of people will see my dress already, but it's okay. Um, <laughs> the Northern Lights Choir Show had their auditions from the 5th through the 12th, or the 5th and the 12th. The 5th, they went there like at school to learn like the choreograph if they wanted to do that, which seems fun. And then, the show choir has their extravaganza show the 28th through the 30th, which is the musical called Who Did It, which is written and produced by North students, which is really cool, I think. And it contains solo acts, group numbers, show choir numbers, and many more. So hopefully that'll be good for them. And then the avid freshman group went to Century College like two weeks ago. Um, and then my AVID group, we went to the U of M today, which was so much fun. But it was cold outside and windy, so it was like, we were like freezing. And my teacher told me it was gonna be like 40 and sunny. It was not. It like started to get nice as soon as we were leaving. And I was like, this would have been so much better if we had that nice weather like the whole day. Mm -hmm. But we had like a, I think it was 90 minute tour. And then we had like an hour and a half to go venture out and like go wherever we wanted to which was fun and my friend actually saw stephanie there which i probably should have texted her saying i was there i don't know why i didn't think of that but <laughs> but it was super fun and i got i did get some gear i had to they gave us like coupons like 20 percent off yeah they gave us that so all of us definitely went there and spent money we probably shouldn't have <laughs> but for sports the boys and girls track team had their meet at Hastings and they I think my friend does like long jump and I think it's like 
she like I don't know what it's called. I'm not like good with track, but like when you like run around the thing, the track twice. I don't know if that's like a hundred. Yeah, yeah. She did that and she did really good on it, which I'm so proud of her. I just I just know I have to go to one of their meets sometime here because I told her I'm like I'm gonna go to every single one of them. So I gotta keep that up to her. And then the they have a meet coming up on the 28th against St. Thomas Academy at three. And then the girls softball team has been doing really good. They've had nine games this month, probably more before that too. And some were canceled probably due to bad weather because all the rain, but they do have a game today. I asked my friend how it went, but she didn't text me back. So I can't, I can't give it, I'm pretty sure they won though because they're doing so good. But yeah, but that's all for me today. So I'll pass it on to Stephanie. All right, good evening everyone. Um, I hope you had an amazing April. Um, I have two things to comment. We only got cereal bars for the ACT, and she was saying options, so I'm a little <laughs> jealous because um, I'm gluten-free, so I could only drink water, which was a bust, but I went to go eat a burger after. With so good. Um, uh, I hope you, you all enjoyed your April Fool's Day, if you celebrate or not, Ramadan, and Easter, and even if you don't celebrate these holidays, Family time is super important and a time we all enjoy. Um, this month, I spent most of it studying. <laughs> Took the ACT and four midterms in, in the span of one week. So I um, was a little under the weather and like not sleeping very well. But it's OK. I did very good on the exams. I'm very, I'm, gl I'm glad we're gone. We're, we're over it. Um, I also spent this time deciding on my plans for next year, and I know that we have already planned for next year at the high school, but for PSEO, we have until May 6th to sign up. Well, actually, May 6th is the day we sign up for classes, so it gives us time to actually think about what classes and scheduling and all that. So I was really debating on whether or not taking Calculus two or Statistics, but since there's two semesters, why not take both? Uh, <laughs> Um, I'll be taking Calc 2 in the fall and then from because it's an easier transition from Calc 1 that I'm currently taking to Calc 2 in the fall and then statistics in the spring. I'll also be taking chemistry at the college level, college writing and advanced medical Spanish. Um, I really didn't know how much your schedule opens up senior year after all the requirements are usually completed so I have a lot of options next year. <laughs> Uh, for the academics of school, like I mentioned before, all juniors took the ACT on April 5th, same as the North. Um, juniors and sophomores had their MCA testing that day, April 5th. Uh, AVID juniors had their Winona trip canceled, unfortunately, but luckily they were able to schedule a new college tour, I believe, to Eau Claire, um, early May. Um, AVID juniors have also started writing their college essays and I recommend other juniors um, to start as well because the Common App has released their essays for this upcoming year. The National Honor Society will be hosting an award ceremony tomorrow night, uh, April 27th, and students who have won a letter award in sports and different activities will be awarded as well as high achieving students who have earned high grades this year. So I think it is sophomores, juniors, and seniors. Uh, this is my third year receiving it, so I'm really glad. It's uh, my first year having the ceremony. Um, <laughs> another thing I was gonna comment for, for that is we didn't get an NHS induction like in-person ceremony, so I'm, this is our first time seeing an NHS induction that soft, the current sophomores will be inducted for next year, which is great. Uh, sports have officially begun today. Batminton is playing North. Softball plays today against South St. Paul, and they also play Simley tomorrow, which is really tough on them because two games, two days is very tough and heavy, especially like with their schoolwork and stuff like that, but props to them. Uh, there are several more games, but it's really hard to keep track. <laughs> uh, theater is hosting their new show, Legally Blonde. Last week was their opening debut, and I think I'm going to watch it this weekend. I haven't watched any of them, so I really, really want to go. Uh, NHS is also hosting a senior send-off picnic, and this date is still uh, to be determined. For our senior members, 
we are trying to contact different restaurants to see if they're able to donate some delicious food for our seniors. This is especially important for us since this is the first time also in two years that we are able to celebrate. So if you know of any restaurants that are willing to send some donations, please let me know. Uh, prom tickets are now on sale. I have that tab open on my computer so I can like let my mom know. <laughs> Uh, the CIS Spanish group headed over to the U of M about two weeks ago, and they were able to take a Spanish lecture and, like, like all dance in a hall together. <laughs> take, like, salsa lessons, I think they told me. And they also took a tour around the school. I'm sure they had that one hour and 30 minutes of time to, like, wander around the school. And I was able to run into them and see some good friends. They came up to me. I was like... Am I dreaming? Like, someone pinched me. Like, this is weird seeing people from the high school at the U. But it's, it's a cool experience. It's really cool. Jekka uh, was ranked top 10 ha hospitality in the nation at, at the national or international competition in Atlanta, Georgia. So I was really glad. They is, I'm really proud of them. I have a lot of friends in Jekka as well. So for them to be able to be ranked this high is so, so good good for, for them. Her Tartan overall, unfortunately, there has been a rise in fights between some students. It, ha it is really hard to see this happening, especially in the last trimester of the school with only a few weeks left to go. Hallway expectations were retaught on Monday in all classes and administration and su st support staff are taking turns officing the hallways to help support positive behavior choices. Last week, COVID cases were about six student cases and zero staff cases, which is really good. Uh, compared to the week before, there were uh, four student cases. So it's a small rise, but not much to worry about. Students are still encouraged to wear their masks. And I did get to visit the building last Friday, and I was able to see various, various students wearing their masks. So um, I'm glad to see that like mix of both, you know? Some important dates, if you guys wanted, uh, academic award ceremony is tomorrow, April 27th. There, the AVID uh, 9th to 11 banquet is May 9th, prom May 14th, 8th grade visit, which 8th graders, I believe, from Skyview and Maplewood visit May 17th, uh, AVID senior banquet is May 23rd, and the senior graduation is June 2nd, and that is it for me. Thanks, you guys. Your reports have become very comprehensive. Huh? <laughs> yes, indeed. I love it. Um, any comments or questions? Yeah, I agree that your reports are very comprehensive and it leaves uh, no questions to the board members about what's happening. But my question is about, um, uh, so, so when you started, you talked about how it's been, you, you know, spring has, we have had a long spring with, you know, we all want spring to come, but it's been winter. But um, but also uh, during this time, uh, that's when the masks have been lifted and everything. And then we're talking about yeah, it's almost six weeks left for the end of the school year and prom is coming. What are the moods like at, at, the, at the schools and um, uh, as far as uh, that's concerned uh, in, in, in lifting up the spirits of, of uh, the students? being able to gather because uh, i i'm assuming like, last year there was no prom maybe no there was there was it was mass yeah. Yeah. yeah okay yeah but maybe the year before there was and so yeah so so things are getting better now and and so w what's the mood at the schools at this at the schools right now at both high schools um, at my school, I know everybody is super excited for prom. Um, probably getting a little anxious because I know some people still haven't found their dress yet. So there's just like, I'm like, you gotta, you gotta get on it. It's it's in a month, but you still have some time. But I think everybody like, compared to like second try and like, first try, everybody's like, they're like, it's kind of like half and half. Like everybody's stressed, but then some people are like, just like super excited for school to end. 
which I'm pretty sure all students are excited for school to end. But um, moods wise, I feel like everybody's like happy and like cheerful. Not not like super down and all that stuff. Not having like fights like Tartanus. <laughs> not to like throw shade on your school, but <laughs> but yeah, I think everybody everybody's good at my school. Yeah, um, yeah. I don't I don't um, support their the, all the fights. I don't like that. Just especially like. It's unnecessary, I believe, but uh, yeah, I think students are really excited for summer to come. I feel like we're all tired of the second winter that we're having, but with having the mask taken, like lifted, the mask mandate, uh, I think it was encouraging for students, especially for us to think that it's like things are going back to normal. Uh, but yeah, I think we're really excited for prom, graduation, seniors are so excited for prom and their graduation and being able to have these traditions that haven't been normal or haven't been celebrated the past two years. I think it's, it's good for them to really anticipate and be excited and uh, in NHS we had a meeting, they were able to like let the seniors know like these are your last few weeks. But because these are the last few weeks, it doesn't mean your behavior should change. Like, you are still a student, and uh, you don't graduate until June 2nd. And so be kind because you were you have been kind this whole year, so it doesn't take any more effort to be kind these last few weeks. And that's I, th I think that's the same, I, same thing I can say, and m so much staff just push through it. I know we're all tired. AP exams are coming up. So many things are coming up, final exams and stuff like that. So just we're seeing the end, like the light at the end of the road. So yeah, I think we're close to the finish line and that's what is making us happy. All right. Thanks so much, you guys. Good luck with all your exams and <laughs> <laughs> all right next on the agenda we have uh is it operations yeah mm -hmm. operations and the construction update Sarah. well thank you madam chair members of the board superintendent we are excited to be here tonight i know we've been going through years of planning and construction thought it would be a good time to share with you in the community um, where we are currently with the construction and the phases of planning um, because we're about to head into a really big transitional summer here and I'm sure everybody in the community has also seen construction work starting at our high schools with earth moving and building construction starting there. I'm excited to be standing here with Jenna Peters. She has been living and breathing all the planning meetings and construction over the last several years. So it's very fitting to have her present this work that she's been doing so much of over the last several years. So I'm gonna turn it over to Jenna to present where we are currently with all of our work. Well, thank you. Thank you all for having us today. Um, yeah, as Sarah said, we're super excited. Uh, it feels like it's been um, a long time coming and it's fun to be up here to start to report on nearing some completion for some of our projects. And so as we get started today, just a reminder that when that bond passed back in 2019, these were some of the big priorities we had as we looked at renovation and construction in our buildings. We wanted to update safety and security functions. We really had an eye on innovative and flexible learning spaces for our students and for our teachers. Uh, focus on healthy environments through things like natural lighting, updated mechanical and electrical systems, and of course, outdoor site improvements. And so as you all recall, uh, phase one was back in 2018, 2019 with the uh, construction and renovation at Richardson and Castle. And that was prior to that bond passing in 2019. And we have been knee deep, well, waist deep or shoulder deep probably is probably a better way to describe it in phase two. Um, with a focus on the buildings that you see there, Carver Elementary School, John Glenn, Justice Allen Page Elementary, Eagle Point Elementary, Skyview Middle School, and then we have secure entry projects that have been happening at Gladstone, Weaver, and Cowern. And as we kind of wrap up in this phase two, we're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, as the students said, um, we are heading into phase three with 
construction starting at North High School and at Tartan High School. So I was telling Sarah as we were creating this presentation tonight, this is maybe my favorite slide. Um, it kind of speaks to how much we have been, go how much we've, how much action's been happening here over the last couple of years. And so you can see the logos of the buildings that have been under renovation or construction over these last few years. So this is phase two and happy and excited to report we are nearing completion or at completion on some of these buildings. So I just wanted to give you a, just a kind of a school by school quick update on where things are at with each of these phase two projects. And so I'll start with Carver Elementary. You're taking a look at the main entry there as you look straight on and then you can see that classroom addition to the right. At Carver, um, way back in spring 2020 is when construction started there. Um, and it has gone in phases as you, as you all are well aware. Um, for example, uh, just moved into that classroom addition last fall. And so they are getting used to their new spaces. You can see an example of one of their classroom spaces there. And we are excited. We are in the final phase of construction there at the building. The pre area where the former kindergarten classrooms are or were, um, that's what's being um, completed now. Um, and we are at temporary occupancy at that building. And so the school will be ready to host some summer programming this summer, which will be exciting to have more students experience that school. And our school board just had a retreat there on Sunday. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Good. You so got they it. got a little bit of a look at it. Yep. Excellent. Here are just a few pictures from inside Carver, which you may have seen, but you can see in the top left there, that is the uh, view of the new media center. And then you can see some examples of some classroom and some flexible learning spaces at Carver Elementary. Eagle Point Elementary, super exciting to be over there right now. So that is one of our brand new buildings being built on the current Eagle Point site. And that view is actually the back of the building where the bus loop will be. Um, the day actually we went to take pictures, they were doing concrete work on the front side of the building. So we couldn't get a picture of the front. But you can see to the left there, that is the cafeteria space. That area in the middle is the entry um, coming off of buses in the morning, and that area to the right is the classroom tower. So Eagle Point also began construction back in 2020. It was back in the late summer of 2020. As I mentioned, it's a brand new building, and we are expecting it to be substantially complete and achieve temporary occupancy here in May. Um, a lot of the work then will turn at Eagle Point to that existing building and that, that work happens this summer as that building is demolished and then that paves the way for the site work that needs to happen um, for the new building. But we are expecting Eagle Point, the new Eagle Point, to be fully operational for the coming school year, so we're super excited about that. Just a few additional pictures of Eagle Point. Um, the, the middle picture shows it's weird to see a cafeteria without tables in it, but that is the cafeteria space. You can see it's a very bright, space if you've been to eagle point yet natural light was a high priority in all of our buildings and i think it really shines through at eagle point in our new justice allen page elementary schools um, and you can also see then some examples of some classroom and flexible learning areas justice allen page is next and there's a view of the very front of the building um, Justice Allen Page, there he is, um, was designed as a, it's a sibling school, meaning it has the same floor plan as the new Eagle Point, um, just different color palette throughout. So if you were to walk through the, the floor plan of Justice Allen Page, you're essentially walking Eagle Point as well. You can see Justice Page in the picture there. We had him and his family out for a tour back in March, and that's him sitting in the media center. Um, he was, it was an amazing tour. He was absolutely overcome and super proud and honored to be to have this building name for them. Um, construction began there back in summer of 2020 as well, and it is currently substantially complete, and we do have complete, and we do have temporary occupancy of Justice Allen Page Elementary School. Building commissioning is in progress now, and we plan to host summer 2022 programming at this site. So it'll be awesome to get kids into that space and get, get them into one of our brand new buildings this summer. Including Freedom School. Including Freedom School, yeah, so that's gonna be, that's gonna be fun. We were just on site last week, actually touring with the program coordinators as they're deciding on spaces and where they're going to be for the summer. So there's a few more pictures of Justice Allen Page. Um, the picture on the left shows kind of an example of one of the classroom pods. The, one of the important things to the core planning team and the user groups was that this building have a, a strong community feel. And so the, or, the classrooms are organized around common learning areas, but meant to kind of feel like a small community field, even though it's a larger school. So, you're taking a look at one of the classroom areas there. 
Um, in the middle picture is a picture of the gym, and on the right is a picture of the media center. Again, weird to kind of see the media center without bookshelves in it yet, but um, we actually have furniture delivery um, happening now as we speak at Justice Allen Page, so furniture is going in. And Eagle Point Furniture is slated to come in here in May, so we're cruising right along. Moving on, John Gled Middle School, you can see that's a picture of the front entry to the building. And that construction began way back in spring of 2020, and again, phased construction to work around through the school year and working around students and um, classrooms moving around. We're expecting substantial completion at, jo at John Glenn um, in the final phase happening in August here of 2022, and we expect it to be open and operational for the school year coming up. As the fall comes in, it will be more about punch list items, those last minute things and those last things, paints, things that need to be, rubber stripping that needs to be fixed, those little fixes that happen at the end of a construction project. But we're excited to open John Glenn, fully renovated John Glenn for 2022-23. And here are some photos of John Glenn. I love this one on the left. If any of you have been, were at the old pool at John Glenn, that gym is actually what the old pool was. So that was super fun to watch under construction, kind of amazing what, what architects and builders can do with a space. Um, that middle picture shows one of the classrooms, and then you can see on the right um, part of their common learning areas at John Glenn as well. Skyview Middle School, there's a picture as you're driving up to the front entry of the building. They just actually were recently completed sort of that um, panel work on the pool, that large volume is the pool area there. Um, that construction began in the fall of 2020. And of course, there's been also phased construction. We, we say it's been a complicated pro project and the teams there have been fantastic about working with our construction. It's been complicated because we have an elementary school in there as well as a middle school and they've worked really incredibly well together as they've had to move around within the building to accommodate for construction. So that's been fantastic. Um, substantial completion and final phase is expected in August of 22 at Skyview and we expect it to be fully open and operational for this coming school year as well. Um, as you look at some of the photos here, um, you can see that middle photo is looking back on the main en new main entry to the building, and then you can see the, the photos that flank kind of showcase some of the, the classroom learning areas and flex breakout areas. Along with these big renovation projects, we were committed to making sure that our buildings had secure main entries. And so last summer, we worked on um, new secure main entries at both Weaver and at Gladstone. And so those were completed last fall. So both have that same idea of the rest of our buildings where there's a weather vestibule for folks that it's open for folks to get in and escape sort of the elements, which is great in a nasty April. Um, and then from there you have to be buzzed in or let into a more secure entry area and check in with a person at the reception area to be let into the rest of the building. And we have just started now with that same idea at Cowern Elementary. Constru construction just began this month there. So you can see a picture of, if you've driven by there lately, you see the fencing up and lots of activity there. At Cowern they'll have a new secure main entry and that main office area moves to the front of the building as well. And then where their current main office is, that, that area will be renovated and um, new furniture will be going throughout the building. We spent a lot of hours last fall working with teachers, well, the last few years, I should say, between piloting new furniture, trying out new furniture, working with teacher groups to decide on the furniture. So most of our elementaries now are outfitted with new furniture. Cowern and Weaver Elementary will get their new furniture this summer. So yes, this construction here at Cowern is gonna be substantially complete, complete in August as well. So I'll kind of back up for a second. That is our phase two. If you remember, the goal was to time it out with boundary changes so that our students could be welcomed into refreshed and new buildings. And so we're super excited about the progress we've made and super excited about the fall and welcoming kids back into some pretty amazing spaces. We are just getting started now with phase three, which is, which is kind of crazy. So we have our high school projects underway now as well. So we have renovation happening at North High School as well as at Tartan High School. So I'll kind of give you a rundown of North High School. These are just some of the renderings provided by our architects to give you an idea of what the, the plan is. And so you can see at North High School, 
that showcases their new main entry and plaza area in front of the building. Um, for the scope of the project at North High School, the plan is to build that classroom addition so that we can have students all on the North Campus rather than dividing up here between the District Ed Center and North High School. Of course, the secure entry addition, as we've done at the rest of our schools, and then some building renovations throughout. We started construction here just about a month ago, and it is a multi-year, multi-phase project. And so the first phase that's actually gonna be happening now, they've started on sort of the footings and foundation work to start that new addition, which will be up on that northwest corner of the building. But also the other part that will happen now this summer will be um, the main entry area is gonna go under renovation so that that's ready to go. Um, that project, the scope of this project is set to be completed for next August, so August of 2023. Um, this year it will host summer programming um, for our buildings um, with all of the construction happening throughout our district. We've got a few sites for summer programming and they will be busy sites. Um, but we knew that going into this summer with so much excitement and so much transition and so much construction happening, we knew this was gonna be a busy summer for summer programming and, and sites working. So, but we're excited that North will have a space and can host some of our secondary summer programming. There's a few more images of North High School and sort of renderings what our, our architects and builders are planning there. So that top left picture, that same idea as you saw at the elementary and middle level, that I, the idea of flexible learning spaces for students. And you can see then on the right, top right, that's a student who is in the main office area. And then on the bottom right, again, more examples of sort of that flexible learning area. And the bottom left is the media, a, a view of the media center. There was a lot of time spent at the high schools with the flexible learning areas, just we're trying to design for years and years down the road. And, with online learning becoming a thing, we needed to provide lots of different spaces for students to do learning, and so I think we're achieving that at North, and as you will see at Tartan High School. So here is a image of Tartan High School as it completes. So very weird to not see the round towers. As we talk about just the scope of Tartan High School, so. A classroom addition will go on, there'll be an athletics addition, and major building renovations. This will be a big project. That project started back in February. Um, this summer, it will be the, the, the high school will be closed due to construction. Um, water needs to be shut off, et, et cetera. So Tartan will be closed for the summer, but this project goes through spring of 2025. It's a pretty big, pretty big project. We kind of joke among the facilities team that all of our other projects are kind of preparing us for Tartan. It's going to be a it's going to be a fun one, but it's going to be transformative for the for this high school. Um, as you can see the images there, um, some of the renderings there you can see in the top left, there's an example of sort of that flexible learning space. Um, that top right image is a view of the media center. Um, both high schools really wanted to have that media center kind of almost student union commons feel. Um, so you could, only, you could host large group meetings, you could have small groups, kids could be working in there individually with lots of visibility throughout. Um, that bottom right um, is a view into sort of their cafeteria commons, upper and lower level. It'll open up tremendously. Um, if you've been to Tartan, you know that that's kind of a dark building with narrow hallways and so the, a, a lot of emphasis in putting in how can we open this place up and create lots of natural light in this building. And then on the bottom left, you can see part of the athletics addition and that's a view of the new main gym. So as we kind of wrap up that phase two, as, as Sarah mentioned, um, we are hard at work with the transitions um, and the plans that need to be made to kind of get everyone settled in and ready to go for the fall. So we're moving on from construction to new and renovated buildings and so as we are planning we have different teams focused on planning the logistics of all these moves and um, we're anticipating about over 300 staff moving to different buildings as you look at all the different employee groups. As you look at kind of how the staffing is going, all the district buildings will be impacted with some staff moving in or out or both. Um, as we know, we have three of our buildings closing, um, Maplewood Middle, Oakdale and Webster and one program closing, Skyview Elementary will close, but Skyview Middle will become, that building will become a full middle school. Of course, we'll have Justice Allen Page and Eagle Point opening up those new buildings. And then as I've mentioned, major renovations wrapping up at four buildings. Summer programming is something we need to work through this summer as we plan all these transitions. 
Um, I mentioned that all of our elementary schools and our middle schools will all have their new furniture by the time school starts. And of course our attendance boundaries take effect to start the new year. So lots happening this summer, which means lots of coordination and planning among a lot of groups. Um, it was, it's kind of funny, like I think even a couple of years ago, I think as time has gone on, people have realized the impact, like for people who thought, oh, I'm really kind of far away from this, this isn't gonna impact me. As we've gotten closer, everyone's really realizing like this impacts us all. So it really is a team effort as we, as we coordinate all this transition work with all of the groups you can see listed there. Um, one of the things as we're getting ready to transition is how does it feel? And so we've really tried to provide lots of opportunities for staff to get out and see these renovated new buildings. And so we've led over 30 tours since last August. And you can see the various groups who have been engaging in tours with us. Um, it's been really, it's been a really fun way for people to get excited about the buildings. Of course, there's always a little anxiety when there's change. But it's been a great opportunity to kind of explain the why behind some of the designs, how the buildings are going to work. So it's been fantastic that way. You can see there, there's a picture of Heidi George, who will be the principal at Justice Allen Page, standing with Justice Page. And actually, that painting is one he and his family donated very graciously to be hung in the building. So it's pretty awesome. Um, because of all this transition work, we had to kind of create sort of a timeline so that we could work through when all these moves occur. And so this timeline has been sh shared with staff district wide. We it, included in this timeline is we knew we needed to provide staff opportunities to pack and get in their spaces and get packed up. You know, important will be them knowing their room assignments for next year so they know how to label their boxes and where they need to go to. Um, they have some structured packing time coming up here May 27th and again on June 3rd. And what we've asked is that as that staff who are moving by the end of the day, June 3rd, they should be packed up and ready to go. That allows our, our facilities team to kind of scaffold all the moves that happened this summer and put an order to it all. Um, construction drives some of the timeline for who moves when and, and some other factors, summer programming, et cetera. So, we will be busy moving people over the summer and then middle of August, we're inviting our elementary staff. They don't have to report back to work until August 29th, but we're saying, hey, buildings will be available for those people who like to get in a little bit early and set up their classrooms. Um, middle of August will be that time. And then for our secondary schools, August 22nd, typically secondary teachers don't need or don't take as much time to set up their classrooms. They just don't have the amount of stuff that elementary teachers do. And of course, we're all gearing up then for the welcome back week for staff, which will be the end of August there into the first part of September. Um, part of the transitions work has also, from logistics to getting people comfortable and getting to know our buildings, another huge piece of this is how do we celebrate and honor our buildings. And so it has been super fun to be a part of the farewell open houses. I, I know many of you have attended those as well. Um, really hard to strike a balance, I think, sometimes. In a, it can be a bittersweet time for staff, but it has been so amazing for me. I kind of described it, every event has been like a homecoming. So many families and former staff are coming in. You see lots of hugs as you walk through the building. The principals, our communications team, have done a fantastic job of kind of creating a warm and welcoming atmosphere and making it feel honoring and celebratory. Um, so it's been really good. So we have a couple more of those. Um, of course, there's the 622 Archives Project. Um, that is a way that we are collecting the histories and artifacts from our buildings. We will be planning groundbreaking ceremonies for Northern Tartan High School this summer. And then, of course, once we hit fall and we welcome everyone back to school, we will be planning ribbon cutting ceremonies to celebrate these new buildings. And so with that, that is a 15 minute update on all the action happening here in 622. What questions do you have? That is a great question. I'm not aware, like the, it, the what we're able to do is, is pretty incredible and pretty fantastic. It's, like I said, that slide where you see all the things happening at once. Yeah, it is pretty exciting. I know 
back in 2019, there was a big emphasis. We want all of our kids to experience something new and innovative in the learning spaces. So it's pretty exciting that we're going to be able to offer that. I'll let Sarah speak yeah. to that. Yeah, I just did a financial analysis. We are on, we are under budget actually for our projects. We are tracking substantially under budget, a budget, so we're doing very well. No, but I think being a principal prepares you well for these kinds of work. You're constantly doing things, and we have an amazing team. So everybody, you know, it is not easy to live through construction, and from building to building to building, people have been incredibly gracious and flexible, and that's not easy to do, especially over a couple-year span. If I could just add to what you just said, Nancy, um, for those members of the board who are, weren't here when we put Jenna in this role. So picture Jenna. In fact, Jenna was extraordinary kindergarten teacher who here has had your children educated by Jenna as a kindergarten teacher right May and Michelle both right one of the best around then she became the most amazing and excellent guru for teaching the science of teaching reading right so she was a literacy expert not just here but uh, in a statewide project for a number of years then she became an elementary principal and the way she landed in this position is her school, Richardson and Castle were the two schools we started with, remember, before we even went out for the bond referendum. And through the process, both separately and independent of each other, the construction company and the architecture firm independently and separately came to me and said, you need to hire Jenna Peters to help with all your future projects because she has an amazing way of helping construction world understand the educational side of things you know and too often there's this is part of why you stay on budget right um if i remember before we started these projects we studied i know there was a big article in about other districts that landed way over budgets and such and some of the reasons why they went over budget was that if everybody's not at the table before you design a space so if you're going to design the science wing have the science teachers be there. If you're going to design a, a kitchen, have the nutrition staff be a part of the planning. If you don't do that at the front end and you get halfway down the road building plans and then you suddenly learn that you forgot something that was critically important, it becomes an extra additional cost to go fix it later. You know, those alternate, those add-ons, uh, change orders. And so with Jenna's leadership, she spent thousands of hours with teachers and nutrition service and paraprofessionals and all kinds of staff to make sure their voices are heard at the front end. So she's also a big reason why we're on budget with these projects. And who knew when you were a kindergarten teacher, did you ever knew this was, I was listening to you present and all these facilities and architectural terms were rolling off her tongue. You know, I, I one of my greatest prides is having, finding all these gifts and talents that people have that we didn't know they had. They're great, it's wonderful. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's been fun. Completely different learning experience, but I love a good learning challenge, so it's been really fun. Yeah, thank you for the presentation. I'm really excited to see all the progress that's happening in the schools. Uh, as Christine said, I was uh, at uh, um, Carver uh, over the weekend, and so the progress that's going there, it looks spectacular. So I'm really pleased about that. And also pleased about all the other projects that are going on. 
but I'm especially pleased with the uh, Tartan High School project because my <laughs> kids went there and I spent many, many years walking through those hallways. And I actually have a friend who graduated from Tartan High School over 30 years ago and she said that school still looks the same, you know, from over 35 years ago. So it's really uh, great to see that it's, uh, it's going to finally be in the 21st century. Um, and um, 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 so that our kids can be uh, uh, in good learning environment that's um, similar to other uh, school districts in the in the surrounding areas. But my question is about um, so you talked about all the good things that were happening and and all that. And I'm pretty sure if you had more time, you could have uh, talked to us about some of, some of the summary of the challenges that you have had. And I'm specifically uh, interested in learning about uh, challenges in supply chain, because we've all heard about supply chain. And we've also heard about labor shortages. So can you talk a little bit about that? I can talk a little bit that, about that, and Sarah could probably expand on that a little bit. You know, I think in, in a lot of ways, our construction team and our architectural teams have been fantastic in trying to get out in front of as much as they can. Um, I think some of our projects kind of starting right as the pandemic um, was going, already things were on order, and so that helped tremendously as well. There's certainly, there are certainly things, like you've, we've run into hiccups along the way where suddenly a certain part won't be available and we're like, that kind of then has a domino effect on what can be done, but I think our teams have done an amazing job, amazing job of pivoting and like, well, then we got to focus here and keep moving forward. Um, I think a challenge as we keep going forward is going to be just as, and that's part of our transition work is change. Like, I think as people move into these amazing spaces, there's going to be, a, we're trying to like get ahead of questions that they have about the spaces and how are they going to work? And there's always some anxiety, I think, when change comes around. And so, Part of this transitions work we're doing is to try to kind of combat that challenge of change anxiety, but also kind of support teachers and how they how they learn to work in their spaces, support principals and how they get to know their new buildings. I think that will be kind of the challenge of the fall is kind of adapting to the changes and learning how these spaces work. You know, we talked a lot about innovative learning spaces, and so that requires a little bit. You, you, you have to kind of get used to how does my classroom function now? It's not the same four walls that I had or I might have been used to. And so I think there's some longer term work that we'll be working with and teaching and learning has been fantastic and kind of partnering with us as we kind of think about like how do we help our teachers adapt to change and realize now the different opportunities that kids will have for learning and they will have for teaching as a result of their spaces. I don't know if you wanted to expand on supply chain. Oh, I. I I think you answered that fabulously. I think the one benefit that we had specifically now as we see inflation rising and the worker shortages, specifically the summer and going forward, is that we bid the high school projects early. And so we locked in our bid prices. And so we, we are benefiting from that now but we are seeing more supply chain issues through the high school projects. So it just makes, makes us have to be a little bit more flexible when it comes to um, responding to those things. And um, like Jenna said, we have great teams and we have great partners in terms of architects and construction uh, partners that we can get ahead of it and make sure that we're working with the, uh, the suppliers ahead of time to make sure we're taking things in receipt early even if that means we're storing things on site ahead of time in order to alleviate some of those concerns. There was a, uh, I think both the middle schools that will be around next year had maybe some kind of an open house um, for students that are coming in. Um, Moving to that school, I guess, it was specifically designed for those students. Anyway, what, whatever it was exactly, uh, I attended the one at John Glenn. It was really cool. It was really electric. Um, I had not been in John Glenn since before it was transformed, and it's uh, alien world. <laughs> it's so weird. Um, 
So uh, now I'm going to do a quick lightning round. I just wanted to give kudos. That was a really amazing. Every all the families were really just pumped, and they don't go to that school. And I know there's a lot of apprehension about moving over in the middle of middle school to a new middle school. That was really cool to see. Um, but I got a lightning round of questions. So you don't, you, your answers can be short and succinct. Um, going back to uh, John Glenn, um, like I was saying before, there was, um, I know parts of the old building are still there, but you completely covered them up and made everything blend with everything that's new, which is really cool. And I wasn't expecting that. Um, is that same kind of thing going to be happening at like north which is kind of getting the uh addition or like say cowern that will have um you know the new front of the building will kind of like the 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 floors match all the way through even though we're kind of like keeping uh the, a lot of the same parts but they're going to get like a facelift yeah i short answer yes um architects really do like they've done renovation projects before which is very different than building new and so they do pay attention to the existing color palette how might they play off of that what's going to stay and what's going to be new and how do they kind of match that so it's it is going to look newer than some of the older spaces but how does it blend together as you said and you, john glenn is a great example it's really yeah. um, <laughs> i thought i was i thought i was i thought it was deja vu when i was walking into um the old karate classes that we used to go to and um no i was like i did not take karate lessons here um five years ago or whatever um i i'm probably asked this before and i just forgot um the glass like walls um what, what's the thought behind those again couple things um so one when we talk about safety and security the best thing that we can do from a safety standpoint is have eyes on kids and make relationships with kids and so a high priority was to have lots of visibility throughout the buildings and so that would be number one that's kind of a proactive way to kind of address some of those everyday things like you heard our high school kids say like fights and bullying and some of those very common safety threats we also then have a backup plan for lockdown situations, which I don't need to get into today, but that's number one is visibility. That's important from a safety perspective, but also from a learning perspective, we wanted to create flexible learning environments. And so having, having that ability to have kids um, move in and out of learning spaces without losing supervision, you know, I could literally open my doors and I can spread my class out and we can work in different ways from large group to small group to individual in a four walled classroom you only have so much room to do that um, on the flip side of that we also were really intentional about creating that kind of common area so that not only could classrooms who are in the classroom surround that area spill out and use that space but so that adults who are in the building to provide support for various reasons for kids could go right to the students rather than students having to travel across the building lose learning time to get their needs met and so there's when we talk about flexible spaces, the goal is that they are just that. Innovative spaces means flexible and lots of different ways for kids to work, if that makes sense. Oh, it totally does. Yeah. Thank you. It, it's all coming back to me now. Yeah. Uh, last question. Um, uh, just talking about uh, Carver, uh, walking around, I was looking at classrooms. Uh, what is kind of like the, what's the maximum capacity for each of the classrooms or, and, or what is your target? Like what's a good so classroom size? So it varies a little bit at the elementary by grade level. So typically your kindergarten classrooms are smaller, um, fewer kids in kindergarten and then fifth grade larger and everything in between. Um, so kindergarten we're planning in that like 20, 22 up to max 24 range in kindergarten. And then as you move up the grade levels all the way up to a max of about 30. Um, if you were to go to like Justice Allen Page for example and count the cubbies in the classrooms or you'd see 30 cubbies and so the idea is to kind of plan with that in mind. Um, the furniture is flexible enough that we will seat enough for 30 kids in there, but it can be used for multiple purposes. So things that tables can be used for tables or desks. It moves around, it shifts in different formations. So again, while we plan for a max in mind for just how much square footage do we need to make these buildings work, the really the idea is how much flexibility can we create? Mm -hmm. Because we know class sizes don't come in those beautiful chunks of oh, sure. 28, right? So. And I'll just add too, we, we do try to avoid any elementary class getting that big, but you wouldn't want to have 
the building, the room not designed to be able to handle it. If someone came in late in the year or something got added, but our average class sizes are far below that. But we also know in the planning, we don't want to accidentally not have a cubby for somebody if you ended up a little bit over that. But we actually, our class sizes typically run far below that. And that's always our goal. I, f I feel like when I was at John Glenn too, the, the classes were bigger than, um, than the classrooms I saw at Carver obviously because they're bigger kids. Is that same thing gonna happen at Tartan and uh, Yep, so uh, when our North. architectures go for design, they look at square footage and how many kids need to be in a classroom and that's how they plan the size of a classroom. And so, yeah, a little bit bigger at the middle school level. Um, and yeah, so they plan with that kind of target in mind, again though, with flexibility, no classes can be smaller, they can be larger, but like Superintendent Osorio said, you know, we do try to limit class sizes and keep them but you want to plan so that kids aren't left out, right? Um, I was just wondering if we, if we have an update on what we're going to do with uh, Oakdale Elementary and also Maplewood Middle School. So Oakdale Elementary and Maplewood Middle School are part are set to be demolished. Um, that was part of the original plan back. When the referendum was passed, but we don't have a, a set day yet, do we? Did I miss? Um, Maplewood will be demolished uh, sometime this summer uh, yeah. to coincide with um, the site work that needs to occur. Oakdale will probably occur this fall. Okay, thank you. All right, thanks so much, you guys. You know. I used to, when Jenna was the principal at Richardson, be in the school all the time. And I feel like over the last couple of years, um, because of COVID, uh, we haven't been in the school so much. And I'm so excited for the upcoming year when so many of the buildings will open. And I hope that we'll have lots of events, you know, carnivals and math fairs and all the things we used to have to bring the families in. Yeah, I think even part of those those closing or the farewell open houses, I think that's been a theme. I think people are excited to just get back in the buildings again because you're right, over the last few years there just hasn't been that opportunity. So it's been super excited to welcome into these newly constructed and renovated buildings. Right. Thanks so much, yep. you guys. Thank you. Sarah, you have the next agenda I item as well. You. We're going to just keep on going here. Okay. So I'm here to present tonight because um, as per the recommendations made by the Minnesota Department of Health and the Environmental Protection Agency, we as a district do test for radon in our buildings. And as part of this testing, um, presenting these results to you is mandated by the Department of Health. So we're going to jump into the test results. So just a little overview, I'm sure many of you know, but radon is a color, colorless and odorless, tasteless gas, and it really occurs in much of Minnesota just due to the natural geology of our state. Um, it is a gas that can accumulate in buildings just by the nature of how our buildings are closed up in the winter and heated. Um, Many structures do test annually for this, this uh, radon gas, and so we as a district do use health and safety levy money to do so. So we do, as I said, take the recommendation to test our facilities, and I'm here tonight to report that we did so and report our test results. So we did contract with um, the Inve Institute for Environmental Assessment to conduct the testing back in January. We did do 684 tests around the district at the buildings as shown on the screen. And they were done in, in compliance with the mandates that the Department of Health has given us. Um, just to note too, we will be going back to do the buildings that are coming on, online and or spaces that were under construction that we couldn't access this next year. So this is not the entire district. I'll be back again next year to give you more test results. So based on where we come out with the results, we want to be ideally less than four and the PCIL is for picocuries per liters of air. So under four is where we want to be. 
If the result is greater than four at any of the test sites, they recommend that we retest. Um, and then it goes up from there. The greater the reading, there's many other steps that we need to take. I'm happy to share that all of our 684 test results came out below the recommended four picocuries per liter of air. Um, so basically that means we don't need to, we need to retest in five years, which is the, 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 the best news we could hear, or if we make any changes to any of the foundations or mechanical or ventilation systems in that one area. So just a summary, as I mentioned, most of the district was tested, about half of it because construction are areas that are where you couldn't access were tested in January. We'll be back next year to test the other half. All the radon tests that we had returned below the EPA action level. So no action is needed. We'll go back and retest in five years unless we make some construction changes to our, our ventilation systems or our foundations. And I've given you the full report from IEA. It's in the board book and it's also available in our operations office. So with that, are there any questions? Okay. Yeah, thanks so much. Thank you. All right, next on the agenda is the superintendent's report. Okay, well, thank you, everyone. Um, my, my update will just be brief here. Um, just three quick things I wanted to share, well, four. I just wanted to thank the board for coming together for, you know, some team building this weekend. We did do a retreat uh, on Sunday, and we ended up really largely dedicating it to just getting to know each other better and doing some team building, which I, I don't know about you, but I really enjoyed. It was fun. So thank you for that. Um, you all uh, have hope, may have seen uh, an email announcements that came out this afternoon. You all know that our current uh, assistant superintendent, Troy Miller, uh, won a superintendent job in New Richmond, Wisconsin. We're so excited for him and also sad to see him go. He's been a long, long standing part of our team. Last night he was at uh, our Webster closing ceremony and I <laughs> went up to him and said, is this like, this is your life, Troy Miller? Because if you don't know, he grew up as a student at Webster, later became a principal for many, many years at Webster, and then an assistant superintendent. And so there is, uh, I remember him telling us last night there was somebody there who was his teacher when he was a student. So that was pretty fun. Um, really an uh, exciting time for him and a loss for us. And with that, um, just this afternoon, we made the announcement that we will have, actually, we're going back to the two assistant superintendent model, not adding a member to cabinet, but, and I mean additional person to cabinet, but we are gonna organize some things to maximize all of our gifts and strengths and talents. So we will have Tricia St. Michaels, who will still oversee uh, student services and special education, but she's gonna take on some supervision of elementary and early childhood schools as well. And Principal Ty Thompson from Tartan High School is going to be our assistant superintendent for secondary programs, as well as our Office of Research Evaluation and Assessment and our equity office as well. So. Uh, couldn't be more excited for their leadership, but that also creates uh, a new opening uh, for a principal at Tartan High School. And I will tell you, the announcements just came out today, and literally since 4 o'clock, I've gotten messages from people in other districts asking about that vacancy. I'm really hopeful we can cast a really wide net and draw some really great talent. Um, you may also be aware, because we sent in a message out at the end of last week, that we also now have a vacancy for a principalship at Carver Elementary. Um, our beloved Gina Abramson has decided to step down um, from her role as principal, and um, she still wants to stay on with us, but has opted to choose a different, um, a different role for herself. And so that position got posted on Monday, and again, I, I'm just amazed at how many people from other districts who already are sitting principals are emailing interested in the position. So I think that's going to be a really exciting time. We'd have, you know, it's going to be really a fun time. And both um, both communities will have voice and, and input in, in the selection process, but it's going to be um, a whirlwind of activity in the coming few weeks. So um, 
when you find time, be sure to congratulate our new assistant superintendent, Ty Thompson, uh, Ty Thompson and uh, Trisha St. Michaels. And uh, we're really, really excited for their leadership and, and so many wonderful things happening in our district. So those are big announcements that just came out this afternoon. We were trying to coordinate all the timing. Um, so that's all kind of exciting. Um, another thing I wanted to share with you, um, just got word this morning that, uh, you know, the U.S. News and World Report publishes every year their annual list of top high schools in the country and per state. And I'm very excited and pleased to share that both Tartan and North landed in the top 10% of Minnesota high schools for 2022. And we're so thrilled. <laughs> yes. Not only that, but um, thanks to May's amazing efficiency, um, I asked her if she could do a little sleuthing for me today. And she spent some time unbelievably quickly digging into um, the data of the other schools that scored above us or, you know, landed above us in that top 10%. Um, only one, and it's not a just public school district, it's a charter school, uh, has anywhere near the diversity we have. So the vast majority of those schools that were um, in that top 10% range are very, very um, predominantly white schools in very affluent communities. And I'm just so unbelievably proud and thrilled that we hold our own in that environment. And it's something that we are gonna make sure lands on every social media page we have and gets the word out. And you better believe I'll be quoting that at our graduation when we give a little welcome to everybody and, and every audience we can speak to. So just so pleased and proud of everyone's hard work during this pandemic. Um, sometimes we feel like we're not doing enough and we never really are, but it's still really, really amazing to see that come out. It just came out. So I'll be, I, I'll be sharing you the whole list and sending that article out as well. So, so grateful for that. Um, just beaming proud of those folks who've done all that hard work. The other final thing I wanted to mention, um, when we published board book on Friday, I forgot to include this, and I even forgot to mention it when we got together for our board retreat on Sunday, but um, you may be aware that just last year in June, um, our federal, President Biden um, identified Juneteenth as a federal holiday uh, beginning now. And so we are actually in the process of working through a resolution. I wanted to plant the seed with our school board now. Um, I'm actually gonna we're, gonna, we're gonna wait till the next board meeting to have a resolution so you have time to review it ahead of time because quite frankly, I meant to put this on the agenda last month and it totally slipped my mind because it's been something we keep talking about. And uh, we really, this, this holiday has really, really become important. Um, I, a lot of our families, I had communication with a lot of families and staff members a year ago about it. Um, you know, the vast majority of school personnel don't work on that holiday in June, but we know there are for those year round employees. And also we've already made arrangements not to schedule summer programming on that holiday for because there's a lot of picnics and community gatherings that take place and we want our students to be able to be with their families for those events. So um, we will be bringing that uh, back to you for official resolution and adoption if you are so willing to pass that uh, at our next school board meeting. But I'd like to open that up for questions or comments. I did have Paul already run some numbers on what might financial implications be if that became a paid holiday, for example, for those year-round employees such as custodians who work through the summer. And um, if we're looking at our, our year-round full-time employees, I think we agreed it was fairly nominal amount that would cost us if we did that. And, and we felt like it was fairly really important for us to, to make that statement to our community and, and honor that date. Um, and, you know, really try to uh, draw attention to such an important date. So, uh, questions, comments? We'll, we'll put a lot of information out in our, uh, our resolution, um, but we're really excited to take this, this, bring this forward as a holiday for our school district. Oop, I think you need this. <laughs> well, I just think that as the largest employer, one of the largest employers in our school district, I think we have an obligation to set 
um, standards of of employment and I think that uh, recognizing this holiday is an example of the way we can lead um, other employers in our district to to also um, accept and follow the same standards um, I think it's something we could have done years ago instead of waiting for President Biden to do it first but um, I just think that it's as the largest employer I think we have a an obligation to accept and acknowledge certain standards and I think this is one great way to do that I'll add to as May and I were looking at demographic data just again this morning um, you know I, we, I always would say we're 68 percent students of color we're now 70 percent students of color mm-hmm pretty exciting All righty. All right. Uh, go ahead, Charlotte. I want to know um, if you have a quick update about COVID. Um, oh. COVID, because th there's, there's been talk about COVID um, in increase or, you know, mm -hmm. some strands that are out there. And do we, you know, I just want to hear about your perspective. Um, you know, someone asked me recently, uh, was it maybe when we were talking over the weekend, um, are we going to be able to do a graduation ceremony in person? And we all went, no, we're not canceling. Uh, I think it, it's so hard. It's The roller coaster ride has been so hard. I, I do, I will say we're watching the numbers very carefully, um, not just what we're seeing in terms of community transmission, those numbers are bubbling up. Um, and at the same time, we are not seeing uh, nearly the uptick in staff and student illnesses at, the t at, the, at this time, um, but we're monitoring it very closely. Um, and I will say this, you know, as we head into, you know, May becomes this month of many, many different events. Um, and we're going to be very strongly encouraging masking. Um, and quite frankly, depending on where the numbers are, we may end up requiring masks at graduation. We're monitoring that closely. I think, um, you know, we want to make sure that we maximize every opportunity for our students to have in-person events like we've been doing. But we're going to have to really take, turn, take time to think about um, those really larger gatherings. And, you know, a, a graduation ceremony in you know, we're doing it indoors this year again, back to the Aldrich Arena. And, um, you know, that's a lot of people in one space, and we definitely want to make sure that we're maximizing all safety precautions. Um, but we're monitoring it very closely and and hoping and praying that the numbers go back down again. But I, I, I will agree. I mean, I every day I watch the news and I keep thinking, oh, please, please don't let this bubble up again. Let us at least get to our end of school year. One thing I say, I, I do feel helps us you might recall this year we have a longer summer vacation than we have previously because we started before Labor Day because of construction and we're starting school after Labor Day this summer and the goal was to give us the longest summer possible this year and as you just heard from our construction planning and Sarah's probably had about 17 heart attacks since she started working with us in November <laughs> about our timeline so um, I'm hopeful that at least by um, getting us out a little earlier than probably some of our neighboring districts. Maybe we can get ahead of that big surge that happens. Um, but we're watching very, very closely, um, really carefully monitoring. And I, I sure, sure hope things can turn around quickly. But um, we're going to continue to communicate around vaccine opportunities and whatnot for families and students. But it's, um, it, it's one of those things that kind of keeps me up at night because we've gone through so much ups and downs and drama and opinions and people feeling upset about decisions we make and we're always monitoring that so but again I've always said when we removed our mask mandate I always said we'll bring it back if we have to you know and it's not a popular decision that's for sure but we're definitely going to watch really closely thank you for asking that question Next on our agenda, we have the business office, and first we have the contributions, and that's Ben.
Minnesota Statute 123B.02 permits school boards to, quote, receive for the benefit of the district bequests, donations, or gifts for any proper purpose and apply the same to the purpose designated. In that behalf, the board may act as trustee of any trust created for the benefit of the district and for the benefit of pupils thereof. Therefore, the Director of Finance recommends the following resolution. Be it resolved by the, board, the School Board of Independent School District Number 622 that the school board accept with appreciation the following contributions and permit their use as designated by the donors. The first donor we have is Barbara Rube in the amount of $100 for the purpose of Meals on Wheels. Sharon, Sharon Sobzak, Sobchak, in the amount of $10 for Meals on Wheels. Ideal Credit Union Community Foundation, in the amount of $1,500 for Meals on Wheels. Michael Joseph William Wydell, he is donating a two, 2010 Pontiac four-door sedan and this will be going to the North High Industrial Tech Auto Shop. Burwald Roofing Company in the amount of $500. And the purpose will be for North School-Wide Service Day. Next we have Robert and Diane Dufrenzi in the amount of $1,000 for the North School-Wide Service Day. We also have Minnesota Women's Care PA in the amount of $500 for the North High AVID program. We also have the Not the Cop Family Foundation in the amount of $2,000 for the North High Scholarship. And last but not least, Shutterfly LLC in the amount of $1,000 for the purpose of North High Scholarship. This brings the total fiscal year 2021-2022 monetary contributions to the total of one thousand one hundred and one thousand three hundred eighty one dollars and twenty cents. Can I have a motion? Actually, I think I'm in a motion. Move to approve. approve thanks. Second. Okay, moved by German, second by Natardi. All in favor say aye. 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 And all opposed say nay. And thank you very much, Ben, and thank you to all the donors. Ben's been reading superhero comics again. <laughs> now that we all know how your brain works, Ben. <laughs> Got to read some <laughs> All right. So next to the agenda, we have the capital budget and Paul. Great. <clears throat> well, I am once again a little bit uh, sick and under the weather with a cold, so forgive me if you can't hear me as well, but... Madam Chair, members of the board, Superintendent Tucci Osario. Uh, I'm here today to talk about our capital budgets for fiscal year 2022 and 23. So um, what you see here are uh, the initial capital expenditures for the district-wide um, budgets for the following year. Um, as we discussed during our April 5th work session, um, for the most part, our district-wide budgets are the same as they've been in, in prior years. So we roll forward the budget amounts for the different departments and programs. Um, the one exception is we've shifted 600,000 in curriculum-related expenses from fiscal year 22 to fiscal year 23. So the teaching and learning team um, didn't have all those expenses needed for this year, and, but they plan to continue or to use those funds the following year. So for the most part, these expenses are, are the same, excluding that $600,000 $600, shift. <clears throat> For our building budgets at our school sites, both the building and athletic programs are based on enrollment. And so these are varying from year to year because of the enrollment projections that we have for fiscal year 23. So overall, fairly consistent as enrollment is, is somewhat the same with a slight decrease. Um, so, so in net, we're seeing 8,000 less being 
uh, budgeted for capital expenditures at our building level. Overall, $3,227,334, a net increase with our district-wide expenses of 591000 So that would take our fund balance from the projected $9,125,320 to $7,846,409. And then the last component of the capital budget are our leases and assessments, and these are either just our scheduled payments for the upcoming year or what are updated uh, city-based assessments that um, we're obligated to pay. So. Uh, the net total for that is two million four hundred six four hundred sixty seven thousand seven hundred eighty eight or a change of two hundred thirty one thousand um, uh, a, a decrease of two hundred thirty one over the revised budget for this year so across all three of those components our district wide our building level and then our leases assessments the total capital budgets and lease and assessments come down to five million six hundred ninety five thousand one hundred twenty three or a net change, a net increase of 360,488. And that, um, that's the, just the one component of, of next year's budget that we're, we're hoping to have approved today so that our departments, our buildings can begin planning for some of these expenses that need a little bit of more of a lead time. So that's why we present this portion first. Are there any questions? As just a reminder for anybody who is a viewing, the vast viewing public, <laughs> um, you know, rather than take our, <laughs> don't chuckle, there are people watching. <laughs> right? Josh can tell you there's one apparently. Um, it's Amy Colborn probably, right? She's a former board member. Um, but I will say, um, rather than give you the entire budget to approve at the June board meeting, which would be a long process, we do try to bring you pieces of it throughout the spring for your approval so that we can move forward with pieces of it. Of course, uh, by law, we have to have that balanced budget by the end of June. But so Paul's bringing to you this part, just, just for reference, that we usually do these in portions along the way through the spring months. Yes. Nancy, could you now turn your mic on, please, just so we can make sure the, turn it on. the on. So yep. on, so we can hear you on the recording. <laughs> okay. Oh, and now we're good. Oh, okay. All right. So, um, you know, I work at the Senate, right? And so there's this big discussion about um, you, you know, do schools need part of this $9.7 billion surplus that the state has, right? $9.7 billion. And one party says schools need no additional money. Another party says they need, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars of additional money. So they're very far apart. And we've been talking about districts having budget shortfalls. And so there's going to be a discussion actually Monday about what districts around the state have, you know, budget shortfalls. And for example, Rochester has like a $23 million anticipated budget shortfall. Um, and I think you've presented a little bit about this in the past, but can you say some more about that to us about what our what you anticipate for us we are still building out the budget so I don't want to give any figures at this point but I think mm -hmm. broadly speaking in terms of how school finance is funded here in Minnesota the bulk of, of our funding is from the state and and most of that comes from the basic formula allowance that is only scheduled to increase by two percent next year right so 
So we are tasked with managing this time of inflation um, um, of, of kind of large scheduled wage increases for our various um, staff groups that are far above that 2% increase in revenue. So um, the simple math there is if revenues of our funding is only going up 2% and our expenses are up four or five multiple percentages more, there's going to be a, a net shortfall there. So we will have to make up for that with our fund balance, um, the grace of any federal funding that we can use to help subsidize and support the additional services that we're, we're having to take on during this period of, of COVID and, and learning loss. So um, initial enrollment projections are, are, are decreasing for us as well, projected to decrease. So most of that 2% increase is almost negated by our decrease in enrollment. So I would say we are seeing probably consistent, if not just maybe marginal decreases in our revenue with some very large increases in our expenses. So as I mentioned during our work session, I think we're going to be in some financial trouble. We're going to have to figure out how to manage the budget. So I think just by the nature of how the state structure is funding, we would very much support and appreciate additional revenues um, from the surplus that the state currently has. But Right. And, and what yeah. they're talking about as a, you know, possible compromise, you know, that, of course, everything's delayed till the last minute, you know, and then they come out of conference committee and come up with a compromise. But they're talking about um, subsidizing the, uh, the, cross, the special education cross-subsidy and the English le language learner cross-subsidy. So would that help us if? It would certainly help, okay. but I mean, I think that's, um, there's multiple components, I think, that, that are challenging for us. So okay. again, if our revenues are fixed, we're at the whim of whatever the other expense is. And so I think structurally, those cross-subsidies are just uh, a burden that we have to use our general funding to support, right? And so compounding that with, with COVID and the other challenges of our current time, um, that will help is not probably going to get us the whole way. But yes, of course, eliminating that cross subsidy, reducing that would be very, very much supportive. If I could just add for reference, um, our special, and again, the cross subsidy means the amount that you have to spend on a program by law and that you don't get reimbursement for. And our cross subsidy at last time I checked for special education was around 14 million in District 622. And our cross subsidy for EL programming was 1.4 million. And I, those were numbers I wrote down like last, early last fall. So I'm sure they've even gone up since then. Um, but that's, that's an incredible, that's over 15, approaching $16 million of a cross subsidy. And again, I always like to remind everybody Special education students are also our first and foremost general education students. Special education programming is in addition to general ed programming. So they're not different students, but they're extra services. And the same for EL students. And um, so that, that cross subsidy is incredibly high. Um, and it's, it's definitely um, a piece that uh, for districts with higher numbers of students qualifying for special education services and EL services, the cross subsidy uh, impact is greater, like ours. So I just have a um, a quick question to the, and this really isn't about any specific budget item, but I guess my question is whether or not it's becoming an increasing budget concern that we should be aware of. My thinking is that. Our district has become heavily involved in technology improvements, um, partly because of what we did with our COVID experience and partly with our investment in all of our new buildings and with the supply chain issues in technology and everything, mm -hmm. inflation and all that kind of stuff. Uh, when are we going to see an, a budget impact in our planning um, 
to deal with additional resources, we're going to need to support the technology that we're starting to use and embrace in our school district. I just see that as kind of a, it just came to me the other night when I was going through the board book and I was thinking about stuff. It was for all, for as much as I think I'm aware of what our costs are going to be in our district, I can remember when we used to buy outdated technology and store it mm -hmm. because we couldn't support what we were doing otherwise. Mm -hmm. And so I was just kind of thinking all of a sudden, like all this stuff that we're doing with technology now and these new buildings and everything, at what point are, are, is technology and the support of our technology and the replacement of outdated technology going to become a very serious part of our budget discussions? I will say very soon. Um, our, our hope is um, that we will in the near future go out again and try for asking our voters to approve a technology levy to help support um, things that you just mentioned, Steve, down the road. Um, we are at a point with um, devices that we're, we're okay right now, but we're nearing the point where we're going to need to start replacing the student devices. Uh, Chromebooks last generally typically around three years, around three to four years, and we're coming up on that very soon. We're going to need to start doing a refresh of student devices because they'll just stop working um, working well. Um, with all the construction projects happening, we've updated a lot of technology. Um, um, a lot of our old systems, like our card access systems, need to be updated. Um, that's a, that's a, a very large expense that we'll have to we'll have to find a way to pay for here very soon as we finalize construction across the building. And so, um, to answer your question, it's it, it'll be very soon that we're going to. Tech levy in the fall. All right, Paul, thank you for presenting on this again, and thank you for taking our questions at the study session. I thank hope you. you feel better. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, thank you. So I'll read the resolution. Be resolved by the School Board of Independent School District number 622. Approves and adopts the 2022-2023 capital expenditure budget as per the attached capital budget plan. Can I get a motion and a second to approve? So moved. Moved by Anderson. Second. Second by Livingston. All in favor say aye. 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 And all opposed say nay. And that budget is approved. Thank you again and thank you to Paul again. Um, Next we have human resources and we have the termination of probationary teachers. Um, Amy Lee, do you want to speak to that? Or? Good evening, Chair Yenner, members of the board and Superintendent Tutu Rosario. Um, I have two resolutions tonight. The first one is termination of probationary teachers. And at the end of every school year, we look at all our probationary staff and those are the individuals that um, if we're not renewing them, we list them as you see on the resolution, and um, it is your responsibility to accept the resolution to not renew them for the 22-23 school year. And this is based on assessments of right sizing and um, making a decision to reduce that number of staff. All right, thank you. I believe this is a roll call vote, right? No? Isn't it? I think it's a roll call vote. Yes, last year it was a roll call vote yeah. as well. Um, so I'm going to read. Caleb, do you have a question? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to confirm. So for this, uh, the teachers that we'd be letting go, they're teachers that started in the last year, right? Or they're newer Could be. teachers? They're still, they're still within their probationary period. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm going to read the resolution. Be resolved by the School Board of Independence School District Number 622 that pursuant to Minnesota Statute 122A.40, that 40, yeah, Subdivision 5, that the teaching contracts of these probationary teachers are hereby terminated at the close of the 2021-2022 school year and non-renewed for the 2022-2023 school year effective June 3rd, 2022. Steve Hunt. Caleb Anderson. 
Aye. Charlotte Natardi? Aye. Nancy Livingston? Aye. Ben German? Aye. Michelle Yenner? Um, should I have done a motion a second first? Okay, moved by Anderson. Second. Second by Livingston. All in favor say aye. 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 And all opposed say nay. Okay. Thank you. Um, the next one is termination of added teacher assignments. Yes. So each year, the added work assignments and extracurricular assignments from the teacher contract are discontinued, effective at the end of the school year. The purpose of this action is so that these assignments are not construed to be part of the continuing contract assignment for those teachers. Um, this also provides additional protection from the adverse effect of extracurricular assignments in the next school year when funding for these services remains uncertain. So I recommend that the resolution to terminate the added teacher assignments be approved. All right, thank you. Any questions, comments on this one? Um, since there's no individuals listed, I don't think that we need a roll call for this one, right? Right, you would just... The regular. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> be resolved by the School Board of Independent School District number 622 that the additional work assignments and extracurricular assignments portion of all teacher contracts be terminated effective June 3rd, 2022. Can I get a motion and a second? Okay, moved by Jarman. Second. Second by Natardi. All in favor say aye. 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 And all opposed say nay. Okay, that motion also carries. Uh -huh. Uh, Michelle, Thank director you. of the board, can I just make a quick um, point of clarification? I think it's, um, I, I know when I first came to School District 622, you know, every contract's different, right? Every bargaining group, every contract language. And so I just want to point, offer a point of clarification. Um, when we talk about the non-renewal of probationary teachers, uh, it's really in honor of our contract language. Our, our current contract states that um, when a position becomes open, that our existing teachers who have the, the licensure for that position have the right to bid into that spot based on their seniority. Um, a few years back, we, um, we worked out an arrangement that after a certain point, uh, when school's about to start or has already started, we stop that domino because let's say a kindergarten teacher retires at the end of September. And if all of a sudden somebody else could bid into that, it would leave their class empty Right, and it would cause a domino of change, and, and, and the whole intention was to kind of stop the domino once a class year, a, a school year has begun. And so, what happens is when a teacher then is hired to replace a teacher who vacates a classroom, for example, uh, early fall or any time during a school year, that one year only just basically means that person was hired, um, but we have to release them from that position to allow. Uh, tenured staff in the district to be able to bid into that spot. Um, so when we hire these teachers, they do know that um, it's not a continuing contract initially, but in the vast majority of cases, we do keep them and, and often in the same position, but um, we have to allow that process to play out. And so that's that's what that means. I just want to be clear that it's not, a, it's not like we're releasing a whole lot of people for performance issues. It's because we're honoring the contract language and um, this is a way of doing it. And, and we do reassure those teachers who fill those spots, um, you very likely have a spot here. Uh, we just have to follow this process first. In many cases, they even, have, they even remain in the same spot. I just wanted to clarify that because I didn't want to give the impression that, that a huge number of folks are underperforming. People are released for um, financial reasons, uh, maybe a program's changed or the need, you know. But, but I just wanted to clarify that piece because I know for me, you know, anytime you enter a new system, you have to kind of learn that existing contract language. And of course, you want to follow your contract language. So I just wanted to clarify that. All right. Thank you, Christine. And thank you, Amy Lee. Um, next on the agenda is board communications. And do you want to start? Okay, I just want to say um, that uh, I was sorry to read on the Sunday paper that um, a, a wonderful volunteer 
uh, for the school district, um, who was a very um, modest, um, uh, low, pri low profile guy, but so loyal to the Harmony Learning Center. And he loved, loved, loved tutoring uh, new, um, uh, new immigrants, new uh, soon to be citizens. I mean, he just loved it. And his name was Al Fox. And I'm, I was just so sorry to read that he died unexpectedly and um, 69 years old. So I'm really sorry to, um, to report that. Um, and uh, uh, the other thing I wanted to say is when I went to the Webster Farewell Open House, I, I met the granddaughter of Elsie Webster. <laughs> and she said that Elsie um, uh, Webster was a former board chair. So maybe we'll have to name a school after our present board chair. No, I don't know. We, do, we don't really do that anymore. But, um, uh, but at any rate, uh, and she was there with her daughter and her, and her daughter's um, son. So three generations of Elsie Webster people were there at the, um, at, the, at, the, um, at the farewell event, which, by the way, was very upbeat. And um, I ran into a lot of my own kids, former teachers and so on. Um, and yeah, so I just want to say that uh, I enjoyed the retreat. I'm really glad we're going to do more recognitions like we had this evening. Uh, I think um, it's just a shot in the arm to uh, realize all the good people in our district that are doing so many, so many positive things. And, um, and also, I'm glad um, that um, we're committed to um, encouraging every student to get involved in some activity or sport. And we talked about that. And uh, so I'm really glad that we're pushing forward with, with that as well. So uh, that's all. Thank you. Yeah, I just want to say that I also enjoyed the retreat. Um, it was uh, a very beautiful day in a very beautiful building and getting to know my fellow board members. I'm one of the newest uh, board member here and so it was really nice to get to know uh, uh, you much uh, better. Um, and I look forward to working with you this coming year. Thank you. Uh, I also really enjoyed the the uh, retreat, and uh, it was nice getting to know everybody more. And I think we had some really good productive discussions. Um, so I'm excited to see where those lead. But uh, I'm also excited to go to Legally Blonde this weekend with my daughter mm -hmm. at Tartan. So there there's still uh, tickets left. But, yeah. All right, I just have one thing, which is tomorrow is Administrative Professionals Day. Mm -hmm. So I want to thank all the administrative professionals in the district, especially Mayher. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, then we have future board meetings. We have May 17th, 2022, a business meeting at 6.30 p.m. in the boardroom. And that is all, unless there's any other comments. When's the next study session? Yeah, we were going to talk about. Okay. We're going to talk about assessment. Do you know offhand when our next study session is? We don't actually have one in May because of all the evening events and graduation ceremonies in May. Okay. In June. So we can talk about it at our next meeting then. Okay. We'll be on the calendar. Okay, thank you. Anything else? Um, if not, can I get a motion and a second to adjourn? <coughs> so moved. Second. Moved by Natardi, second by Livingston. All in favor say aye. 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 And all opposed say nay. Motion or meetings adjourned. Thanks very much, you guys. Thank you.